From her paper, Loftus investigates how the wording of questions asked immediately after an event may influence a witness's response versus when they are questioned at a later time. The results of four experiments showed that the subject's responses were easily altered by true or false presupposed objects, which they would claim to see. Loftus argues that the wording of a question can influence the answer, and that a question asked about an event shortly after it occurs may distort the witness's memory of that event. She also argues that the wording of an initial question can affect the answers to other questions asked some time afterwards. Throughout the four experiments, Loftus considers two different hypotheses, the strength hypothesis and the construction hypothesis. The strength hypothesis can be seen in experiment one, in which some subjects were asked about a car accident and had the word stop sign in their question, whereas the other participants only had turn right in their question. The strength hypothesis suggests that when a subject answers the initial stop sign question, they somehow strengthen certain memory representations corresponding to the stop sign and are more likely to answer that they saw one. The other hypothesis that Loftus considers is the construction hypothesis which suggests that the subject may visualize or reconstruct the portion of the incident needed to answer the question, which makes him accept the presupposition. In the end, Loftus finds that the construction hypothesis is most consistent because although the strength hypothesis can account for the findings in experiment one, it cannot for experiments two through four. The construction hypothesis works for all of the experiments and explains comparable results which occur when the presupposition is of false information. Loftus believes that when a person experiences an event, they organize in their memory in the form of statements. Experience may appear as a collection of points or nodes that represent particular links or objects, with links between the nodes that represent labeled semantic relationships between the objects, which can account for the false information. I like how Loftus used multiple experiments to argue her thesis because it provides a significant amount of data, which is especially necessary in order to show that one hypothesis is more consistent than another. Now for the reflection piece. When I took an intro psychology class, we discussed how eyewitness testimonies during a trial are not actually very useful and can often be unknowingly false. Loftus's work directly coincides with this in that one's memories are very easily altered and reconstructed and therefore are not able to per perfectly or accurately recreate a crime scene. We also discussed how prior knowledge can alter a witness's memory and testimony. If a witness has pre-existing bias, it can heavily influence how they construct the event in their memory. Despite all this, eyewitness testimonies are still heavily relied upon in court, similar to DNA testing, which is also not very reliable. However, this does not mean that a witness is lying during their testimony. Even though they may be constructing their memory of the event based upon a false presupposition, they firmly believe that that's how the event happened, which is difficult to account for during a trial, but could have significant influence on the outcome of the trial.